Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thank you for tuning into this video. Silver and Gold had an incredible year, stole the show, captured everyone's attention, and proved that they are serious investments. And they did it in, in different ways. The gold broke through its all-time high above $2,000, the most expensive it's ever been in, in 5,000 years. See, silver didn't break through its all-time high, but it did jump from $11 in March to nearly $30 in a, in a time frame of a couple months. So both of these, have, both of these, you know, these instances have shocked investors and and made made a strong point that, that gold and silver can be uh, beneficial and profitable. Now, looking from the outside in, which would you invest in? And that's where this video comes into play. Now, my name is Silver Slayer, not Gold Slayer. I like silver for a reason, but both of these metals have intrinsic value, so both, which, whichever you choose, it, it's definitely safer and smarter than any other investment. And, and why not choose both? Diversification is key. I still like a little bit of gold in my portfolio. Gold has its own benefits uh, aside from silver, and you, you know you can fit $100,000 of gold in a shoebox. You cannot do that with silver. So it still does have its advantages. I just see more advantages with silver, more potential, more opportunity. So. With that said, I also wanted to share something. Since we're talking about gold, comparing it to silver, we got a look at the gold to silver ratio. So right now it's 79 to 1, meaning every 79 ounces of silver equals or amounts to one ounce of gold. And we saw it as high as 125 in March to 1. And you can see these charts, the intraday. So anytime, here's, here's March 125 to 1. So anytime it's this high, this means that gold is much more valuable than silver. And then when it goes down, this means that silver is slowly outperforming gold. And you can see, like, let's do the the five here. So you can see, um, in let's see, let's try to get all time. You'll see in 2011, um, it went really low because that's when silver was fifty dollars, right? And now you can see uh, up here was when gold was extremely high and silver wasn't. So you can see that that when you're investing into certain into certain metals, you could use that 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 chart to see which one is the better buy at that period of t in time, right? When silver was eleven dollars, that was a great time to buy it because that's the cheapest it's ever been relative to gold in history. So so anyway, let, let's jump into this article. So it could have been technology stocks such as Amazon and Zoom, of course, or government bonds, cash, or property. Preferably in the countryside, as this pandemic rippled around the world and locked down. The economies crashed into the worst recession ever recorded. There were plenty of different ways investors might have tried to ride out the storm, but there was one asset they could easily have overlooked, and yet, which would have outperformed almost any of them, and that's silver. See, people forget that that silver's a ticking time bomb. This is a, this is a wild metal. It's it's extremely volatile. I like to call it gold on steroids. It's like a it's like a more extreme, more exaggerated, more dramatic version of gold. For much of the past decade, silver has been ignored as a largely irrelevant alternative to gold. In the past few months, however, it has started to shine. The these precious metals has soared in price outperforming most alternatives. And with investors nervous about the global economy, with central banks printing money like crazy, with the president of the United States diagnosed with the virus, and with rising demand from green technology, the price get a lot stronger yet before this bull run is finished. And, and that's just a couple of, of the several reasons why silver is so explosive. I'm, I'm glad they, they mentioned the green the green revolution, especially if Joe Biden wins with, with solar panels and the photovoltaic cells and silver. We also have 5G towers that uses a lot of silver. We also have electric vehicles. So the way that we are headed technologically, silver is going to be needed more and more and more. So demand is going to be skyrocketing, but the production, the supply is diminishing. So there's going to be a bit of a... a a, a battle between that and that's also going to cause higher premiums which you're already starting to see so some of the consequences are already starting to show so when the year started a few hundred ounces of silver in a vault somewhere would have been a, among the last places you would have wanted to park any spare money the metal has always had a small group of absolutely who regard it as one true currency but they are all generally kind of people who store guns in the mountains, hoard food or for the apocalypse, and prepare for the guys from the UFOs to finally make themselves known to us. In the mainstream financial markets, 
it was irrelevant. Reading through the small print of the Brexit negotiations was more entertaining than watching the silver markets. Nothing ever happened. And it's true. I mean, when you invest in the silver, you really got to, to you know, stand your ground. You got to remember the reason you started investing, why you started stacking. You got to remember silver's true value. I mean, especially with precious metals in general, it's not as exciting as cryptocurrency or even stock markets. It's a much slower paced investment um, and it's more of a hedge against infla inflation. It's like storing your money in a time capsule. Some people don't have the patience for it. Some people um, get too, get too uh, distracted from the day-to-day -day things and, and they, they like, that, they like that, that drama. So that was reflected in the price in January 2015. Silver was trading at $16.50 an ounce. In January of this year, it was trading at 17. Only five years, it slowly moved 50 cents one way, right? The, the, 2016, the July 2016 high of, of $21 silver, and, and that was pretty high, but, but you could see from five years, it moved 50 cents, and then usually went back again. And then it, in March, it started to race upwards over the course. The next month, it went from $17 an ounce to a high of 28. It was actually 11 in March as well. In sterling term, terms, it even did better. So you can see that, that a lot of time people check the markets throughout the, the months and years and they look at silver and say, silver is still this price. It's been three years. Silver is still around this price. And, and you got, and that's because silver is a much slower investment. If you look at from back in the day or if you look at 2011, 1980, if you look at where the economy is headed from stimulus packages, QE, that's, you, you got to look forwards, not, not not backwards you got to look at, at the potential of an investment so by any historical standard has been a very dramatic rally according to the Dutch Bank 34 percent rise in silver price in July compared to 10 percent in gold so what was the trigger for that one level price was simply catching up with its events elsewhere um, silver is a much smaller market than gold so it's gonna hit higher highs and lower lows uh, silver is a much smaller market so if people start investing into both of these silver is going to go up in percentage terms higher or down in percentage terms lower which is also why it's more volatile but also why there's more opportunity so with with any risk there's reward the first and most obvious silver is just like gold it's a traditional safe haven it has been in and out of fashion as a monetary metal for the past couple of thousands of years and is not an asset central banks store in their vaults as they do with its yellow rival even so, it has more or less held its place alongside gold as a way of storing wealth over many hundreds of years. As this pandemic plunged into the world into a deep recession, government deficits soared and central banks started printing dollars, pounds, euros, and that is going to push precious metals higher. It even says right here, a precious metal or precious metal has always been a hedge against inflationary spiral and all of a sudden that seems more attractive than ever. Gold started to rise strongly and his junior partner did even better. Second, something else was happening in the background. Gold isn't used much except wedding rings and, and storing wealth, right? That's so true. Gold is used more for coinage, bars, jewelry, rings, necklaces, earrings. Silver, on the other hand, is not. Silver is used more for technology, laptops, cell phones, right? Silver nanoparticles. Uh, there's colloidal silver in the medical world. So, so silver is more of an industrial metal. It's used in more technology because it is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity and electricity. So silver and gold should be affected by, by two different things because they're used for two different things, right? Which is still, it's still interesting because they, they still move fairly, <laughs> fairly close to each other. So, uh, so anyways, and, and even co it goes in this article talks about you know, the 5G technology, electric vehicles, uh, solar panels, all this stuff that I was kind of talking about and, and talking about Tesla booming. So the result, there's going to be a lot more demand for silver. That means the price will go up. And that's so true that the demand is going to be skyrocketing over the next five years. But the supply is diminishing. Mexico, Peru uh, accumulate 40 percent of the world production of silver had to get shut down due to the pandemic. Um, there, there's there, the miners aren't even focusing on silver. You know, these miners are looking at gold, lead, zinc, uh, you know, the, the metals that can put some money in their pocket. So there's really not much silver getting dug up out of the ground. And the silver that is get, getting dug up out of the ground is getting lost in technology because nobody's scrapping silver out of laptops. It's not profitable to do, to do that. But I can tell you 
people are scrapping gold out of laptops and cell phones because it is profitable. It's not worth the time to do that with silver, but it is for gold. So a lot of gold is remelted, rescrapped, recycled, reused because it's profitable to do so. So over the past month, silver has started to stabilize again. It's back to $20 an ounce. So with central banks still printing money and with the rising industrial demand, there is no reason why it shouldn't head towards $30. And the true silver should have a place in any portfolio and can make yet a lot more money than anyone expects. It's like the ticking time bomb. It's everyone doubts silver, but I promise you silver stackers will have the last laugh. I mean, when silver started this run up to $30, everyone started to, to look at it as like we weren't crazy and it shouldn't be it is a, a you know silver is a rebellious metal a very rebellious metal because it's a threat to the u.s dollar and not only silver but gold precious metals are it's like going against the grain and and banks are gonna portray it that way because they don't want you investing in the gold and silver when you invest in the gold and silver you are in complete control of your wealth if you can't hold it you don't own it so Banks are going to push stock markets, things like that they want you to invest in because that is still pegged to the dollar. You're still in their hands. Once you do that, once you transfer fiat into gold and silver, you took the power away from them. So you can see why they're going to try to portray gold and silver as a bad or unprofitable investment. So anyways, uh, you know, I hope I covered, I, I hope you get the point now why silver has just as much if not more potential and opportunity than gold does i mean to each his own like i said uh, if you like gold if some if gold is just your thing then, then then go for it i just personally see more potential with silver more opportunity and it's more affordable it just makes more sense in my opinion why would i invest in the gold after it already has exploded past its all-time high so it's kind of dried out Silver still hasn't. It's not even half. So the next silver boom, which is going to happen because it always follows suit after gold, and since silver is more volatile, is probably going to be to exponential terms. Right? That's I'm looking at uh, the future. Gold, monetary metal, silver, monetary, and industrial metal. So that means two different things. When the economy is in bad shape, gold and silver benefit because they're monetary metals. They're safe haven metals. But when the economy is in good shape, Gold doesn't benefit, but silver does because silver is so intertwined in the economy. Silver still gets used and, and, and produced, and you know it's it still is getting uh, benefited from. So silver is kind of like a win-win situation in my eyes. So uh, I'm curious what you think about this. What which do you invest into? My ratio is probably every hundred ounces of silver, I'll accumulate one ounce of gold, something along those lines. Maybe half ounce of gold by then, but. The whole point is that I'm investing into both, I'm diversifying my portfolio, and I'm still weighing the odds in what I believe in. If you think gold is going to go better, or is going to be a better investment, then go for it. Don't just listen to me. I'm just sharing why I think so. I would love to hear your thoughts as well. I mean, in the, put it in the comments. What did you, where do you think gold and silver are going to be at in the next uh, in the next year or so, do you think we could hit three thousand dollar gold, or do you think silver is gonna be the one to take over? I mean, people don't. People think, especially the outsiders, think gold and silver are only worth so much because they're shiny, and that's not the truth. There's a lot of real world uses, more so for silver, you know, that, that is actually put intertwined in our everyday in our, in our everyday lives. Gold, not so much. I mean, the earrings you're wearing or the necklace. But, but when we're talking about actual necessities, silver is definitely on the forefront. So anyways, the link to this article will be in the description. If you enjoyed this, this video, make sure to smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, I post daily videos. I'll probably post another video today, so stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.